Hey guys, what's up? Unfortunately, I want to say rest in peace to Alex Trebek real quick. What a legend. I miss him already. Oh, what the heck? And, um, yeah, on that sad note, hi, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> Let's do this. So today I'm doing a quickie reaction to a video called The New Spongebob Movie is Kinda Bad. It's by a YouTuber known as L.S. Mark, which I quite like a lot. I hope he's okay with reaction commentary videos like this. It's not going to be like a reaction where I sit there and kind of just laugh and all that kind of stuff and go crazy. It's more like I want to see what he means by this. I want to see what the heck the movie kind of, like how the movie is bad. Because, once again, like, I'm here in America where we can't see the movie. Like, it's not out here, apparently. It's, like, available everywhere except here. So I don't know when the heck I'm even going to be able to see this thing. I was excited to see it back in May when it was supposed to come out, you know. <laughs> if only, right? And now because of this, I didn't get to see it. <laughs> like, uh, no. So... Yeah, I'm going to check out this video, and, uh, you know, shout out again to L.S. Mark. Um, I think he's a great YouTuber, a great commentator on cartoons and such, and, you know, hey man, if you're watching, big fan, yeah. And I'm basically just going to give my own insight into this, because, like, I, that really surprised me. Like, people think it's bad, and it's like, I thought the first one obviously was a classic, and the second one was an honorable effort. It was a pretty good, you know, sequel movie that had some great animation to it, so... We'll have to see what this is all about. So, if you enjoy my reaction slash review of this, uh, please leave a like, comment down below. Go check out LS Mark if you haven't already, and subscribe for more. Thank you all so much. All right, the wonderful world of the Sponge and the Bob. Right. You know what's great about being in the UK? I get to see Sponge on the run for any of you damn Yankees get to. <laughs> yeah, lucky you. I, did, I didn't realize he was from the UK. Okay, but all right. Lucky you, LS Mark. Enjoy your low-quality rips while your country erupts on fire, you absolute clowns. Hope you enjoy your free trial of CBS All Access next year, you charlatans. <laughs> because I, Mark, got to see the new SpongeBob movie. And... It wasn't very good. Aside from scrolling <laughs> through Twitter good. and seeing my American friends doom posting, I'm getting a lot of reactions to Sponge on the Run, the latest SpongeBob movie from the loins of Nickelodeon and Paramount. In spite of having a good chunk of the staff from the first movie, this feels way more soulless and greedy than any other piece of SpongeBob related media. Even this shirt. What a hoax. In spite of some stellar animation, which manages to capture the kinetic energy of the original cartoon and great stylized CG, like, look, they, they, they gave us the season one design. He's even got Miss Sheep and Pupils, and, and, and look at his feet and legs. Look, look at his cute little shoes. They really don't manage to craft a compelling story around it. Instead, it's a rehash of a previous episode, with about a quarter of its runtime dedicated to being a backdoor pilot for this awful-looking spin-off show where SpongeBob and his friends... Oh, wait, yeah, it isn't... Oh, is the plot about, like, you know... Uh, have you seen the snail and all that kind of stuff? Like, oh, God, uh... Huh, and, like, that just kind of pains me, because it's like, yeah, like, when I saw the trailer, like, it looked fantastic. Like, the trailer was like, oh my, like, like, ooh, a bunga, man, like, God, you know, <laughs> I literally was like, God, you know, like, that's the best Spongebob has ever looked, man, but then again, it's kind of like, you know, if you put it into an analogy, it's kind of like Nintendo right now, it's like, a lot of their games really go all out with the animation more than they do on, like, substance and being fun, being quality, being, you know, it's like, you know, case in point, the fact that they're just releasing a lot of Wii U games, which is a side rant, but okay, yeah, I'm just like, I'm like, you know, I, I unfortunately got the Wii U, so, like, I've already played most of the games, so it's like, they need to make new games, they do. All right, back to the video, though, back to the SpongeBob-induced rant or babies at summer camp before we go into all that though allow me to get a little more in depth with the plot plankton kidnaps spongebob's oh by the way by the way by the way i am just like i'm just reacting to this video i know like it's probably gonna spoil a lot of the movie but it's like it, uh, it probably won't spoil the whole thing like obviously i still am gonna see the movie but it's like i just want to you know take a look at what this guy has to say like and 
evaluate his opinion. That's why I'm doing this. A little more in depth with the plot. Plankton kidnaps SpongeBob's pet Gary and hands him over to King Poseidon, the ruler of the sea. You know, despite Neptune always being portrayed as the <sighs> King Poseidon. Ooh, that's bad. That is bad. <laughs> Thriller of the sea in the show, but don't worry about that. This isn't the only piece of lore that I decide to step on. So SpongeBob and Patrick have to set out on an epic road trip to get to the lost city of Atlantic City. So it's just like the first one, right? The two approach comedic set pieces, new foes, and face treacherous hardships on their way to retrieve the prize. I wish. I really, really wish it was. Aww. A shameless rehash would have been a lot better than literally nothing. SpongeBob and Patrick set out in their vehicle to get to Poseidon. Then they get there. To be fair, there is some stuff that happens between then, but it's later revealed to be a dream sequence, a, a dream sequence that goes on for 15 minutes. So oh boy. 15. This is the worst part of the film. Not only does it add nothing to the plot other than funny Keanu Reeves, but it's just really bizarre and weird and not in the usual SpongeBob fashion. The initial teaser poster for the movie was all trippy and had the tagline, this movie is gonna be a total trip. I thought the second movie was already really weird, so I wonder how they're gonna top that. Well, they don't. Aww. I really hope, like, once I see the movie, I hope, like, I actually find it, like, at least a little more enjoyable. Hopefully, like, the comedy's on point in the movie. He hasn't mentioned anything yet about the comedy, but obviously Spongebob, comedy is one of the things I go for in the movie, and if the movie turns out to just be suckish, you know, then I'm gonna make, like, a penguin and eat soup elsewhere you know like <laughs> you know you know what i mean yeah like i i don't know everything in the movie is relatively standard fare except for one random dream sequence where spongebob and patrick visit an old western town and have to free the spirits of lol random epic zombie cowboys who dance and sing along to an epic song by snoop dogg Hi, Snoop wacky. Dog? I could give you a more in-depth plot dog? synopsis, but really? that's really all it is. The only why, noticeable why things about the plot are, again, the, the dream sequence with the desert town. And Keanu Reeves, he's just... He's just there the whole time. After the dream sequence, he tags along. And it's... A that's so weird, he's like, in a tumbleweed, man. Like, what the... <laughs> that's already weird. I didn't even know Keanu Reeves was in the movie, but like, oh my god. It's like this creepy 50-year-old dude, just like... Staring at Spongebob's colored eye, man, like... <laughs> it's amazing how you can wear me out on Keanu Reeves, but, but they'd do it. They managed to make me sick of Keanu goddamn Reeves. And he's probably still the best part of the movie. It doesn't feel like an epic quest to find Gary. One, because they find out exactly where he is immediately after finding out he's missing. And two, they get to the lost city with 55 minutes left of the movie. This film is an hour and a half, and they reach their destination in about 30 minutes. After this, they piss about wow. for a montage that goes on for way too long, and suddenly the rest of the cast decide to jump cut to the city to help out, in a scene, by the way, that is also a direct rehash of another older Spongebob episode. Did they really not have any ideas? Well, they did, because there was a cancelled third Spongebob movie about these weird alien cat guys that come down from space, and while it doesn't seem like it would have fit a Spongebob movie, it's a lot more interesting than this. <laughs> not even the city of Atlantis is... I, I, I love his, like... Yeah, like, how, how quickly his uh, icons change. I know, like, that's pretty similar to Pie Guy Rules, except Pie Guy Rules puts these little fade-ins to each, like, Pycon change. I love how it's, like, as soon as his emotions change, like, there'll be a part where he'll be, like, happy. He'll be, like, yeah. No. <laughs> no, no. And I, I quite like that about his um, icons. It's unique to the movie, since they did that in a special, too. And hey, at least they got David Bowie to voice the leader of Atlantis in that special, and not the same guy who voiced Bo Bubbles the Dolphin in Sponge Out of Water, <laughs> which is really damn noticeable. I haven't watched that movie in like a year, and I noticed it immediately. The only other real positive about this movie's narrative is that they actually have something to do for the rest of the cast and aren't shafted or sidelined. The first SpongeBob movie has recently been observed through a more critical lens, with more and more people bringing up its flaws, with one of those being about how it seems to ignore the main cast of characters that aren't just SpongeBob and Patrick. Personally, I don't really agree with this complaint. The movie's focus is about them and their growth as characters, so I don't really mind that characters like Sandy or Squidward get the shaft. The second movie definitely did a better job at using SpongeBob's other friends. That film was a lot less focused on the characters and mostly just aimed to be surreal and weird. 
But Sponge on the Run seems like it's trying to take both of these approaches, and it doesn't really succeed at either. They end the movie's first Aww. act with Spongebob and Patrick being genre savvy, talking about how this is a buddy road trip, and eventually they're gonna have a fight and break up, only to come back together even stronger. Like, they even have Spongebob break a message to Patrick completely unprompted, just to make the joke work. Spongebob can be mean at times, but it always feels earned, or when he's at his absolute breaking point. That's what makes those times when he gets aggressive so funny. But here, he just seems to be a little prick for no reason, other than a really lame fourth wall Aww. joke. What makes this all worse is, they attempt to subvert these tropes, but then... do them anyway. Like, they get into a fight later on the line. It wasn't even of any consequence, they forget it in two minutes, like, literally two minutes. So yeah, the new Spongebob movie... <laughs> well, I will say though, like, throughout all this, like, this whole video, I will say that anything else, like, above all, Spongebob is still Spongebob, and I still think, like, I'm gonna go into this movie with completely fresh eyes. I know it's hard to when you hear any sort of criticism about it, but it's like, I think I do, like, a decent job of sticking to my own opinion and, like, not letting others' opinions, like, sway me, you know? There are times where, like, say I like something and then a lot of people say it's bad, and, you know, they do a great job of, like, critically analyzing it, so that way, like, I'm just like, oh, maybe I see it in a new light, and I'm like, well, maybe that's not so great, or it could be, like, Something like Truth or Square. That movie, you know, quality-wise, is pretty bad, honestly. Like, it's really bad. But it's almost, like, too, too bad to the point where I just kind of love it. I'm just, like... I, I kind of, like, think it's hilarious to watch aside from... Aside from, like, the second half where it really starts to get really boring. I think, like, a lot of the blunders the movie makes, like, in terms of just having montages that are so boring that it's just almost comical and a, a lot of just the blunders the movie makes just <laughs> the cringy you know cameos from the cast and it, it, the cringy cameos from the guest stars like it honestly is pretty awesome but back to this movie like another thing to note is like if this does happen to be bad like that kind of would suck because like the thing is is spongebob has been kind of building itself up as you know, a show that's improving it. All right, let's get back to the video. Then forget it in two minutes, like literally two minutes, it's dropped entirely. There are so many instances where you can feel the writers high-fiving each other, thinking they're so clever at all the jokes they make about buddy trope movies. Oh man, you guys, what clever little twips, <laughs> so silly. But the rest of it is just an unfunny rehash combined with a backdoor pilot that retcons the main cast into a summer camp story. Aww. Each of Spongebob's friends get a little flashback segment to show how Spongebob affected them and what a positive influence he is. But it's just so rote and by the numbers. Like, Patrick is homesick and Spongebob says, he'll be his friend to help him feel better. Then he feels better. Sandy says, I want to be a scientist. But thanks due to being a squirrel, she can't for some reason. But Spongebob just says, you can though. And she's like, Okay. <laughs> it's such basic manipulative <laughs> garbage. I see. Yeah, I bet you maybe, like, you know, maybe some of the people over at Nickelodeon, whenever they were, like, making this kind of movie, obviously, like, they kind of have this blank check of a plot device known as, like, you know, this summer camp idea and having them all when they're little. And I'm thinking, like, well, on the one hand, that is, like, a creative wishing well that could lead to a lot of, like, possibilities story-wise. But on the other hand, they could just use the idea of just having them be really childish as just a way of like, oh, well, you know, it's kids and, you know, they look all cute and such. And it's like, well, we don't have to really like put effort into it because the movie looks good at least, you know, and we have a plot like that. Yeah. Like I can see exactly why this would feel a bit more phoned in. I really hope that the movie actually like maybe I like the movie a bit more, but then I'm sitting here thinking, you know, uh, I, like, if I watch a movie and it's like, and I think a lot of the things that he thinks, like, honestly, like, truthfully, then I could see myself being like, oh, this is not really as good as it could have been, you know, so, but let's keep watching. Hey. Hey, girl. Yeah. 
see people calling this emotional, and it's not even on par with, like, C-list sad Disney moments. <laughs> I think I have a higher chance at crying watching Home on the Range than Spongebob and friends go to summer camp. Dang. Dang. Alright, I gotta admit, I love his freaking suit. Like, the animation on that is, like, awesome. Like, I love just the fish and the way they look. I, I, although... <laughs> The way they animate the the ladyfish's boobs, like, no. <laughs> I I just noticed that, and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> like the way they're like ridiculously pointy, like, but why why? <laughs> Sense. So SpongeBob is about to be executed for trying to steal Gary back, and it's basically in court. And as a defense, the gang all recounts stories about how great of a friend SpongeBob is. Okay. What is this? Oh, also, I keep pausing it, I'm sorry, but love the Sonic music. Have to do it all with him trying to steal Gary. That's what he's getting punished for. I don't think him being a good person is going to relieve that. There was no build-up to this at all. Yet, for some reason, I'm supposed to care about all the characters talking about the time they met Spongebob. At the beginning of the movie, they hint at the fact that Spongebob is filled with self-doubt and doesn't have the confidence to do that. So, how about have this be where Spongebob is at his lowest point, and so his friends need to build up his spirit again, to give him the fortitude in order to save the day? But the way they went about it just comes out of nowhere. And they legit do the same thing that the first Spongebob movie was mocking, same tone and everything, it feels so forced. Then I realized the formula is more than just a list of ingredients and flavor capturing methods. Or some other third thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's hard to get emotional at this That's sort of classic. thing. When I can't help but see it as a dumb excuse to shoehorn in these camp segments to get kids pining for more baby Spongebob. And that's not even to mention how dumb an idea Camp Coral is. But there's already thousands of videos discussing that. So I'll just say that as one of the people out there who cares way too much about the lore and continuity of an episodic children's cartoon, it annoys me to no end. But honestly, I could forgive all of this. I really could. I could forget about the uninteresting new characters, rehashing of previous episodes, and poor pacing, because this is Spongebob after all. And at the end of the day, Spongebob is a comedy, and a really funny one at that. I still regularly watch through the original three seasons, I think they're hilarious. And while I wasn't a big fan of the second movie, I still will stand by the fact that it's really funny, and I occasionally watch it again for the humor alone. Yeah, yeah. But this has got to be one of the most unfunny pieces of Spongebob media. And it's not because the jokes they tell are bad, there just barely are any. Like, there are Aww. times in this film where they get away with a kind of funny joke, like Spongebob and Patrick sitting in their jail cell. Or a Spongebob movie that doesn't have many jokes? What? I mean, obviously, like, I can understand some episodes don't have many jokes, but, like, a whole movie of Spongebob that doesn't have many jokes... But, like, for real, oh my god. I really hope that maybe, like, maybe there's some, like, more subliminal jokes that maybe on first watch, maybe he might have missed, like... But I'm, like, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, no... Nah. ...the stuff with Sandy's Robot Auto. But in between that are, like, ten-minute chunks, where it's more boring and uninteresting more than anything. The pacing is so, so slow. Scenes go on forever. Oh. How about ditching that dumb zombie cowboy scene that went on for an eternity? and split it up into smaller, more random segments that show what issues Spongebob and Patrick face while on their travels. I know that'd just be doing the same as the first movie, but <laughs> I'd honestly rather take that over whatever this is. Strangely, I saw a lot of people rolling their eyes at the amount of licensed music used in the film, such as a cover of Take On Me performed by Weezer of all bands. What? Oh, it's just Weezer. Weezer! Oh my god, it's Weezer! <laughs> but it didn't really bother me all that much. Uh, I I'll take that it over video, an ending yeah. done by the epic rap battles of history, guys. The only thing that was somewhat off-putting to me was the mention of apps like Skype or FaceTime, which felt very out of place. And the original soundtrack was a major letdown. The original movie had Best Day Ever, SpongeBob and Patrick confront the psychic wall of energy, Just a Kid. I could go on there way more. Then the second one has that bizarre Squeeze Me song, which was decent. What does Sponge on the Run have? Agua. I, I can't play it for obvious reasons, but please look it up. It is it is awful. Oh, Hello, no. this is editing mark, by the way. Where where the hell was the, the Gary Come Home remix? It was the perfect setup. I won't go on for much longer, mostly because this movie is so devoid of substance that I don't really know what else to say about it. But also because I'd recommend checking it out for you to still form your own opinion. Who knows? Maybe you'll end up loving it. It's not like I want to hit this movie. Sure, I wasn't a fan of the Sonic movie. I hated <laughs> Scoob and Candace kind of Against the Universe and... Okay, I can see why people may think that, but I really do want to like these movies. And I really love Spongebob and wanted this film to be great. 
and I'm honestly really, really disappointed that I wasn't all that into it. Overall, Sponge on the Run is perfectly serviceable at best, and at worst, it's the weakest of the three Spongebob movies, with a rehashed story, forced in emotion, poorly paced, and in the end, is just not very funny. Aww. Amazing animation though, so seriously, I would I still recommend watching this for the visuals alone. But I don't know guys, I might have been singing a different tune if they just used the original French narrator in the opening, not like they didn't have Tom Kenny on set. The Spongebob movie is kind of bad dot dot dot. The three dots are there for emphasis. Yeah, all right, that was definitely a really good review. I mean, obviously, I didn't react to it for the... Re like, I didn't react to it for the quality of the review itself. I reacted to it just to see, like, what exactly was bad about the SpongeBob movie. And because, like, I can't see it yet, I have no idea about the actual movie. It does pain me that it's like, oh, dang, I mean, there's not one, but, like, two reviews I already saw that were, you know, when I searched out the, the review to react to... There already were, like, a couple of other reviews saying the movie was bad, and it was like, oh, man, like, that sucked, because, like, I really wanted to see another Spongebob movie, and I wanted it to be pretty good, because, like, I actually did really enjoy the second one, too, especially for the humor. Like, the humor was very good. It, it, it may not have been, like, as memorable. Like, the jokes might not be, like, as classic or timeless as the jokes in the first movie, but the jokes, like, there was a good effort on the jokes. Like, I will say there were quite a few, like small little gags that you got to kind of like maybe squint at but they're still there and they're really funny so yeah to hear that this movie doesn't have very many jokes and it's not very funny is like that sucks like that really sucks i mean spongebob the thing about spongebob that we all love is just how funny it is i mean and the fact that it's like this movie kind of strayed away from that and is boring like i could understand if maybe it was a more story driven movie and and the pacing would, you know, kept kept it up the entire time. But unfortunately, like, the fact that, like, he's saying it doesn't is like, ooh. I mean, that definitely is a red flag, definitely going into it. But again, when I do watch it, like, I definitely am going to stay clear of bias. Like, I'm not going to be, like, since I'm a huge fan, I'm not going to blindly love the movie. And I'm not going to blindly dislike it because of this review. I'm going to, you know what I mean, like, watch it myself, baby girl, you know. <laughs> And yeah, until then though, I hope you guys did enjoy my little react to this re review. I don't usually react to reviews like this, but I saw this and I was like, oh god, I love, I love, you know, the first two Spongebob movies. So it's like, oh, you know, to see that this one, yeah, is probably not going to be as good, does suck. Because the animation, like, is brilliant. But then again, animation is not everything in a movie, so, you know, whatever. Anyways, I mean, toodles froodles and... <laughs> I, uh, I'll see you guys next time on Legend Me TV. Power to the Legends.